This is about pair production and annihilation. First of all, annihilation. We have two electrons which meet. This is a Feynman diagram. However, one of them is not an electron. Which one is not the electron, the top one or the bottom one? Well, it's obviously the bottom one because the arrow is going the wrong direction, which tells you that it's an antiparticle, so this must be an anti-electron or a positron. So the positive positron and the negative electron come together. So this is an electron with a mass of 0.511 MeVc to the minus 2 and the same mass of a positron. They come together. The total mass together adds up to twice that, so it produces a total mass of 1.022 MeVc to the minus 2. So the energy that's produced is 1.022 MeV and that is turned into a photon. Now the energy produced is 1.022 MeV which is equal to this amount of joules using E is equal to HF we can find the frequency and from the frequency we can find the wavelength which is 1.21 times 10 to minus 12 meters it would be a gamma radiation now however this is not simple it's not possible to get two electrons, an, an electron and an anti-electron, coming together, perhaps from opposite directions, and then producing a photon. So what are the conservation laws that are going on here? First of all, mass and energy. Well, that is going to be conserved, because the mass turns into energy. Uh, there's a lepton and an anti-lepton. They cancel out to, to, find out, to leave a final lepton number of zero. But what about the momentum? If the electrons approach in opposite direction, the sum of the momenta will be zero. But then you have a photon which has a, a non-zero momentum. So this cannot exactly happen. There has to be another charged body which is going to take some of the momentum. So and a good example would be a nucleus. So you can only produce a photon, a single photon, if there's another charge body like a nucleus to take some of the momentum. So this energy can go to one photon and the nucleus or it could be divided between two new photons instead. What would be the wavelength of the photon if it were to produce two photons? What would each wavelength be? This is a, a paper one type of question knowing that um, one photon would have a wavelength of 1.21 times 10 to minus 12. What would it be for two photons with the same energy? Well, the wavelength would be twice as much because you have half the energy, which means half the frequency, which means double the wavelength. What about pair production? We have a photon which basically decays into an electron and an anti-electron. The wavelength is 1.21 times 10 to minus 12 and it produces two masses of 0.511 MeVc to minus 2. Here again, the conservation of momentum. If these were electrons were to move in opposite directions, the momentum would be zero. But the initial momentum is a positive value. So here again, to get a, a single photon to produce two particles, an electron and a positron, you would need another charged particle, a nucleus for example, to supply or take some of the momentum. What would happen if the wavelength were longer than 1.21 times 10 to minus 12 meters? Well, if you have a longer wavelength you've got a smaller frequency which means a lower energy and there will be not enough energy to produce the electron and anti-electron pair. So this is annihilation and production. Now what is the consequence of this this pair production? Space is not empty. 
Heisenberg's uncertainty principle says that the laws of energy conservation can actually be violated only within the limitation of the uncertainty principle. And this is delta E, delta T, is going to be greater than H divided by 2 pi. And it means that particles of energy delta E can appear out of nowhere as long as the uncertainty principle is not broken. In other words, they can appear, but for a very short amount of time. And this is what space is. It's You think it's empty, but it's not. These, these particles are appearing and disappearing all the time. Then you have these two particles appearing, an electron and an anti-electron. Then they come back together again and annihilate each other. It happens very quickly, but it happens all the time. Space is full of these particles which are appearing and disappearing. But it happens so quickly that nobody is able to observe it. These virtual particles, they're virtual because we can't observe them, can only exist for a time of delta t. For example, an electron or positron has an electron energy of 1.022 MeV. Try to find out the time that that can exist for. Basically, delta E times delta T is equal to H divided by 2 pi. What would be the kind of order of magnitude of the time that this energy is able to be created for before it disappears? In the quantum world, you can break the laws of physics as long as no one catches you doing it. Furthermore, space is not empty. This has an interesting consequence that was predicted many years ago. But what happens here? In this space, this virtual pair production can happen limited by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. If the virtual production occurs near a black hole, both particles usually fall into the black hole. But what happens here? Occasionally, one will fall into the black hole and the other will actually escape, which means it's no longer virtual. It can be observed. So this can happen. This was predicted by Stephen Hawking and he said that black holes basically can emit matter or energy. And he made this prediction that black holes actually emit radiation, don't swallow everything. They're actually able to emit radiation which means that the black hole is not actually black.